shakes I left myself at the gate Shake your fist at my face Put your fingers at me I'm always to blame Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. It is time for Fall-tality, our annual September event, Big Underscore Bane. We got quite a night of action here at PHPW Fall-tality. Absolutely, we do. You better strap in, because it's going to be a hell of a ride. We are in Bloomington, Illinois. We are jammed to the rafters here at PHPW Fall-tality, and we got a lot to unpack here tonight. Absolutely, we do. First things first on the docket today, we got Jordan Zeilinger versus Soda Hunter in the Fatality Tournament Finals. If you've been following this on PHPW Adrenaline, both these guys had to go through quite the competition to get here. And who is going to walk away as the Fatality Tournament Champion? We will find out, Breaker. But also, we got the Die Hard Championship on the line as Aaron Anders takes on the House of Positivity Dobro for the Die Hard Championship. Aaron Anders demanded that he faced the House of Positivity Dobro Breaker. Aaron Anders, I've seen him covered in his own blood. Die Hard Championship is right up his alley. I'm excited to see what happens here tonight, but no Reaper. Absolutely. Travis Fowler, Fatality Tower, Part 5. Big surprise here, Breaker. Who's it going to be? Who am I going to face up against Tier 1? We're going to find out later. We're going to find out. I don't think Tier 1's ready for him, though. Uh, tier 1's always ready. That's where you're wrong. We're going to we got GBM versus El Guapo, and if El Guapo loses, he's fired. If you're wondering who El Guapo is, you're not alone, because apparently he's with Global Wrestling Extreme, but I've never heard of him. I haven't either. GBM is really running the, his own kind of, uh, you know, stages of, of Global Wrestling Extreme idiots at this point, isn't he? Absolutely he is, Breaker. We also have a square dance ladder match for the PHPW Tag Team Championship. What a match this will be. The Black Hand Warriors, fully posable and doing the favor, look to upset our long-reigning champions, the inevitable assassins, Jason Wolf and Poetic Prophet. Absolutely. And I'll be honest, I wasn't on board with this match, but, you know, it, it is what it is. The PHPW Heavyweight Championship will also be on the line as our new champion, Mike the Cleaner, defends that newly won title against our former champion, Ten Kinds of Handsome, Elvis Aliaga. Tonight, the Ten Kinds of Handsome champion brings the Ten Kinds of Handsome championship title back home where it belongs. Yeah, we're about to see. I don't think so. Right now, Breaker, we got John Webb, the returning John Webb, taking on the champ, gatekeeper champ, Jack Gamble. One of match will be former friends and former partners. We'll walk away the gatekeeper champion. We will find out right now. Let's get down to ringside. All right, making his way out to the ring first, the one and only John Webb, the hybrid ace, looking at his first singles title here at Big Underscore Bain. Absolutely. I, I don't know if he can pull it off or not, man. He's, he's been out for a couple months. I mean, I know it was only a couple months, but you got to assume a little bit of ring rust. You would think so, but John Webb's a very highly skilled performer. He's always training. He's always making himself better. But, you know, I know him and Jack Gamble have always kind of had this secret rivalry. Who's the Sean? Who's the Marty? Jack Gamble, I think, has proven a lot of people wrong about his own abilities by capturing that Gatekeeper Championship from Ethan Chambers. Yeah, he, absolutely. That was something that I, I wasn't sure if anybody was going to be able to do. Ethan Chambers had a stronghold on that title. He absolutely did. And now John Webb looking to upset Jack Gamble. This will actually be Gamble's first title defense, if I'm not mistaken. There he is, your Gatekeeper Champion, Jack Gamble. I think, uh, you know, one thing a lot of people may not think about is uh, when you are the gatekeeper champion or any champion here at PHPW, you don't want to lose it your first night out because then people start labeling you that flash in the pan or that paper champion, whatever it might be. You want to be the guy that holds that title for a long time. Absolutely, yes. And I, I don't think Jack Gamble has any intention on losing it tonight. Seems very proud champion. He, kn he knows how important that gatekeeper championship is. Oh, he definitely does, and John Webb also knows how important it is, and, you know, he's making his big uh, his big in-ring return here, or I don't know if it's his first match back, but he's definitely, you know, freshly being put on the uh, on the show, and you talked about ring rust, that could definitely be a thing here. 
Definitely could be. He's, he's had a couple of backstage segments fighting with Jack Gamble. This is his first match back, though. Uh, we've caught him backstage, kind of putting putting the old fisticuffs to the champ. He's ran out and attacked him from behind a couple of times. I mean, this is kind of turning into a little bit of a blood feud. Yeah, Jack Gamble showing everyone in the crowd what that gatekeeper championship looks like. That's got to set off John Webb a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, you, you'd think so. But I think John Webb tonight is more focused on just hurting Jack Gamble. Jack Gamble's the one that put John Webb on the shelf. Yeah. I, I do know also, too, there's not that many tag teams where both guys are successful after the tag team. And uh, with Jack Gamble showing some single success, winning that Gatekeeper Championship, that's got to be something where John Webb is a little... Uh, a little disappointed, right? He's got he's got to show that he he belongs in that same category. Like I said, someone wants to be the Sean, and I feel like in our society today, people always look at well, the other guy must be the Marty, and that's not always the case. But that's up for you know John Webb to disprove everybody that he, that he belongs in that same category with Jack Gamble. Absolutely, and I think you and I both know that he does. He absolutely does, but sometimes perception is reality, and right now Jack Gamble's dominated the early uh, early moments of this match. Let's see that. Nice basement drop kick from Jack Gamble. I got to believe John Webb's able to get back into this. It's still early on. But so far, it's been all Jack Gamble. It has. Jack Gamble grabbing John Webb here, throwing him into the turnbuckle. Uh, a couple of knife edge chops. Jack Gamble also, too, he's the bigger of the two and probably a little bit of the stronger of the two. I think the speed advantage will go to go to John Webb here, but as we see, big back suplex off wow. the top. That could be a game changer for the rest of this match here. I think it hurt both men, but definitely John Webb more. Gamble stomping him down. You got a cover. Is that going to be it? Nope. And a kick out from John Webb. Only one count, too, big underscore bang. Yeah, kicking out pretty quick. Now, me and you agree on very, very little as far as what is happening on PHPW. I feel like we're a little bit more neutral in this match, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do you think walks away the winner here? I think Webb. I mean, I. The reason why, I say why, why, Webb. Why are you trashing out Jack Gamble like that, huh? Why not? I mean, Jack Gamble, goody two shoes, always wanted to appease the crowd. John Webb is focused. He is laser focused on this match. Jack Gamble's out here hot dogging, you know, doing charades, praising the crowd, talking about how great they are. You know Wait man? a minute. When did Jack Gamble play charades? He's always playing charades. His whole life is charades. You're unbelievable. But John Apparently Webb, you have a real issue with people hot dogging. John Webb, I hate hot dogging. I will say the tide has turned since just this little conversation we had. John Webb's in firm control. Nice Falcons arrow on the arena floor. Um, this is know. what happens when I get behind a superstar or a pro wrestler. They get the W. They get in control, Breaker. Well, you may not be wrong in this exchange. We'll see what happens. The match is far from over here. And uh, everybody wants the boss's approval. Apparently. Nice suit the other day, by the way, on Adrenaline. Thank you. Uh, when did you start writing for the Daily Planet? When did you start writing for the Daily Show? Is Perry White nice in real life? He seems a little grumpy to me. Shut your face. Think you can wear a suit better than me? Yeah. Big clothesline to the back of the neck. That could be it. We got a cover from John Webb. Could be a new champion. Oh, I oh, think they were in the ropes. In the, a little, ropes. in the ropes a little bit there. Good wherewithal from our champion, Jack Gamble. It's also pointed out Jack Gamble a little bit more experience than John Webb. Nice leg lariat from John Webb. Beautifully done. Now, wrenching down on that neck, smart move. I think he probably caught him underneath that chin with the leg lariat, now working on the neck. Smart strategy. Jack Gamble firing back a little bit here. Nice brain buster. Pulls 
pull him down the middle with a cover. Oh, feet are on the ropes. super smart. That didn't work out, though, did it? It did not. Still smart. I am kind of surprised to see John Webb just blatantly cheat like that. Win by any means necessary. And, and to me, that shows a huge lack of confidence. To me, it shows intelligence, ring IQ. He knew where his feet were. He knew that he was close enough to put his feet on the ropes, utilizing his advantage. Look at that. Jumping wow. springboard, European uppercut. Beautiful from John Webb. The Jag Gamble, the ever-present veteran with a nice counter. A big DDT right big, here in the ring. Big DDT. With a cover, smart strategy. Referee's in position. No way, no, all right. And a kick out from John Webb. That really takes a lot of guts on John Webb to kick out after a big DDT like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this has been kind of hard to pick a winner because control has really gone back and forth in this match. We've seen Webb in control. We've seen Gamble in control. At this point, I, it could be anybody's game for the Gatekeeper Championship. It definitely could be. Uh, Oklahoma Stampede from Jack wow. Gamble. Really showing his strength there. You don't see that from Gamble too often. We don't with a cover. And kick out from John Webb. Oh. oh. Moved out of the way on that one. These two know each other so well, Breaker. Another leg lariat going back to what brought him. Kind of waiting on Gamble to get up here. I'm not sure exactly what John Webb is thinking. I think that might have been a mistake. Big Northern Larry there right to the back of the head. Got a cover. Shoots the half. That, oh, my God. Wow. I thought that was it. I did, too. I thought we had a new gatekeeper champion right there. But Jack Gamble said not today. Another big chin breaker from Jack Gamble. Oh, big spine big buster. Big spine buster. We've seen that in the past. we got to cover. The ref will give him position. One. And there it oh is. Oh, my God. He is still the gatekeeper champion, proving to all the critics he is not a flash in the pan. What a match. What way to start out Fatality big Huge, up huge, huge victory for Jack Gamble. Let's take a look at the replays. That was what a fantastic match between these two. Big DDTs, but uh, that big double A spine buster. He loves Jack to Gamble. use it. Props to John Webb, though. He has nothing to be ashamed of. What a hard fight match. Hell of a match. Hell of a fight from both these guys. Yeah, absolutely, it was. It's right there. I thought it was over right there, Brick. That big Northern Larry from John Webb could have been all. Jack Gamble with a very, very late two-count kick out, but just, just getting out of time. Well, congratulations to Jack Gamble on a big win. He's going to hot dog a little bit more. What, what do we got here? He just drops the title. Pick up the title, Gamble. What was that about? You forgot your title, pal. Big what? wait. They're going to score Bane. What's, what's going on here? You got me. The Gatekeeper Championship. He just had a brutal match to defend that championship. left the title. Left it? What is going on here? Well, uh, uh, that being said, we got to move on. The Fatality Tower Part 5 here. Tier 1 has been put through the ringer, Big Underscore Bane. Um, yes, he I, has. Not sure exactly where this hatred came from, but I can see where it's going. It's part five of the Fatality Tower, and we're going to see what's happening. I guess that's up next. You got three more guys, and then you get a shot at the boss. And here he comes. Tier one is always ready. The former PHPW champion, the longest reigning PHPW champion in the company's history. The one and only Tier 1 Travis Fowler, in my opinion, the uncrowned champion. He was uh, he was crowned champion, Breaker. He's not uncrowned. He was crowned. He's he, uncrowned because he, he should still be the lost. champion. He lost the crown. After you, corruption ran wild and you got the title from him. And that new Tier 1 Travis Fowler t-shirt currently available at phpwshop.com. Absolutely. Please go buy the shirt. 
I'll always chill out for t-shirts. I don't care who it is. Yeah, well, luckily you have I no gotta, shame. I got to make the money. Tier one's in the ring. Um, I, I mean, I'm looking at my run sheet. I don't even know what's going on, Big Underscore Bay. Does anyone know, besides you, what the, what's going to happen here? Only me and the guy who's about to come out of the curtain knows Tier 1's opponent. Let's remind everybody the situation here. So he has to win. He has to win all these matches to get a chance to get his hands on you. Yes, and if he can defeat me, he goes through seven men to have the opportunity to defeat me. And if he can defeat me, then and only then will we even have a topic of conversation of Tier 1 being a contender for the championship. There's no guaranteed shots. It means that he will be a topic of conversation. And here comes the man who's going to put him down and ruin the tower. I'm talking the future. Drew two time. Wow. Drew Vinsel. The gatekeeper. I'm sorry. The uh, king of the mountain champion, Drew Vinsel. I'll be honest. That wasn't on my bingo card. I'm sure Travis Fowler's kind of sweating it right now. Drew Vinsel. Uh, kind of, as we know, um, back in 2020, he came out of nowhere, became the PHPW champion, and was a huge, huge part of PHPW, but has uh, since maybe kind of lost his footing up until winning that King of the Mountain sh championship. I, I will tell you this, before I go any further, you can also get the Kiss the Legend t-shirt on PHPWshop.com. Currently available. Currently available. Drew has made it known to me via DMs, via text messages, via via Tales from the Estate, via every way he can that he will do whatever I need him to do. And because of that fact breaker, he is going to get as many opportunities as I see fit. Because you're setting the president, if people complain, then you, uh, you bow to that. I'm setting the president because I am the president. You 50% owner. I still own a portion of this company. Wow, quick takedown from Travis Fowler. Could be all. Easy kick out from Drewy two time. Quick kick out from Drew Vinsel. And I, you know, I want to put it out there I am a fan of Drew Vinsel. Uh, I don't necessarily approve of the fact that he's a part of your corruption tournament here. But at the same time, I understand Drew Vinsel's looking out for number one. And he, again, wants to be the PHPW champion, as, as he should have a right shot at. He's got twins on the way, Breaker. He does. Congratulations he, to him Congratulations, Drew Vinsel. Now he's got he's to make some extra dough. And the only way to make extra dough around here is to be the top dog. A quick counter from Travis Fowler. Big clothesline. No, I'm not, I'm not opposed to anyone making extra dough. Buy the Kiss the Legend t-shirt, by the way, over at phpwshop.com. Nice neck vice from Tier 1. So uh, so this is Stage 5 of 7, correct? Technically 8. 8 will be the uh, boss fight, no pun intended. So, But this is Match 5. This is Match uh, of 5. Of the tournament. So throughout the next few weeks on Adrenaline, if Tier 1 is successful, I guess if he loses here, it's over, right? If he loses here, he has one option. Two options. Quick cover one. Easy kick out. He has two options. He can either start all the way over at the first match, or he can quit PHPW. So it's a must-win situation for it's Tier 1. It's a must-win situation. He doesn't get out of this tower. The only way he gets out of this tower is if he gets out of my company. My God, you're angry. I hate Tier 1. Nice takedown from Drew Vinsel. Beautifully done. Let's not count out Drew Vinsel here. Like we said, he is a, a King of the Mountain champion. He's a former PHPW champion. We've got a cover here in the middle of the ring. One. Kick out from Tier 1. Let me ask you a question, Breaker. Go has, ahead. Has Travis Fowler won more than one championship in this company? No, he has not. No, he has not. You know who has? Drew Two Time. Hey, who beat Drew Vinsel for the PHPW championship? Doesn't matter, because we got Drew Two Time in the ring. Wait a minute. You asked me a question, I answered. So I'm going to ask you a question. Who beat Drew Vinsel for the PHPW Championship? Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter, because I'm asking you the question. It was Tier 1. It was Tier, tier one, 1, Travis Fowler. The guy's in the ring right now, so he's beaten Drew Vinsel before. Wow, nice nip up from Drew Vinsel. You know Drew Vinsel has beaten Tier 1 before. I'm not saying that he hasn't, but I'm just saying. 
Tier 1 beat Drew Vinsel to become the longest reigning PHPW champion in history. And in that time, wait a minute. Got a cover here from Tier 1. One, two. Oh! oh. I can see a sweat there, big underscore oh, Bane. That one made you nervous. Yeah. Drew, you can't you can't let him win, pal. Drew ain't moving real good these these last few seconds here, big underscore Bane. Tier mm. one's in the got him prepared for something. Oh, kick right to the right to the abdomen. Tier one's feeling it. Come on, come on. There we go, there we go. Yes! Oh, big chin buster. Big clothesline from Drew Vensel. Oh, big kick right to the gut. And I want to take you back to Adrenaline a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. This man... Tier one Travis Fowler. Nice hat trick there from Drew Vinsel. Decided that he couldn't win the match fair and square. And I'm not, I'm not bull crapping you, Breaker. You're not bull crapping me? This man took the turnbuckle off the, the turnbuckle pad off, distracted the referee, pulled out brass knuckles. And defeated his opponent with brass knuckles. Well, weren't you the one in just the previous matchup praising John Webb for using his feet on the ropes? If you're going to, you know, condone cheating of any kind, you have to condone it all. That, no. The feet on the ropes, Breaker, is using your environment to your advantage. Kind of like taking the turnbuckle back Brass off. knuckles are illegal in, in the great state of Illinois and in the, in the great state of America. You cannot use brass knuckles in the ring. In the great state of America? Yes. The United States. Come on, Drew. Knock him out. I love that when people get angry, they feel like they can just say whatever and people like just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, yeah. Right. Nice snap suplex from Drew Vinsel. And I must say, Tier 1's not looking great right now, and that's got to make you happy. I'm telling you, that's what happens. That's what happens when I get on get on somebody's side. They they start winning. Drew Vinsel, another hat trick here, possibly of these uh, gut wrench suplexes. Really showing his strength here is, is uh, Drew two time Drew Vinsel. Oh nice yeah. Kick to the back. Oh, tier one's eating it. Right hand from Drew Vinsel. Nice takedown. Drew Vinsel's feeling something. Tier one's not looking great here, Big Underscore Bane. He is not. Of course, this is also the fifth, you know, mystery match you put him in. Put him in. A press line from Drew Vinsel. Very impressive. Wow, into a European, European uppercut. uppercut. Unbelievable. Oh, nice backdrop counter from Tier 1. Oh, smart move. Smart move. I tier think, 1 did that, you'd be losing your mind right now. I think, I think Tier 1 was looking for that Tier 1 takedown. Drew it two time. Knew it was about to happen. And he snuck out of the ring. See, look, no, he's doing it, Breaker. Yeah, you're right. He is. That's cheating. Referee doesn't seem to be saying anything about it. And choke slam to the backbreaker. We've seen that before. Oh, the tier one takedown. There it is. We've got a cover. Come on, Drew. Kick out. Kick out. Ah, uh, there you have it. Tier one was ready. Your winner of stage five, tier one, Travis Fowler. That's got to make you feel good, doesn't it? I. I don't know. It was a hard-fought match. You think, can't. I think I'm gonna go cry in the bathroom. Yeah, you can go cry. That's fine. I just, I. I mean, I, I'm not taking anything away from Drew Vinsel. He's a great competitor. He'll be a future PHPW champion. But 
Tier 1 is ready. Tier 1 deserves that spot. Tier 1 shouldn't have lost it in the first place. He was cheated out of it. And he's getting back to that position. Good I on Tier 1. I want to make it clear that I'm only going to make things harder on you from here on out, pal. Maybe, instead of these normal one-on-one -on -one matches, maybe we up the ante a little bit. Maybe we throw in an ODQ. Maybe we throw in a steel cage. Maybe we throw in a chicken coop. Maybe we do whatever it takes to ensure a loss for Tier 1. Glad you're not falling more deeply into the corruption. I am not. Well, if El Guapo loses, he's fired. I've never even seen this guy, Big Underscore Bane. Who is El Guapo, and why is he fighting GBM? I don't know who El Guapo is. He's a luchador that was apparently in Global Wrestling Extreme. He showed up, started beating the crap out of GBM, and I told Bill Venus I have had enough. So if El Guapo loses today, he's also fired. And I can't wait, because it was short while it lasted. Well, uh, and here's that, that stupid song. <laughs> that Bill Venus song. It's kind of growing on me, I'll be honest. Of course it is. Uh, El Guapo making his uh, pay-per-view debut. Uh, is, that, is that the Kokori crew? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Ricky, no. <laughs> Ricky what? the no. Roper. It's Jim and Carl. We are, this isn't allowed. El Guapo with Jim and Carl and Ricky the Roper Rex. A lot of support from the Global Wrestling Extreme crowd. I didn't allow this. I, I don't know who said that was okay. This is I, a one-on-one -on -one match. Yes. But I, I'm curious. Where does all this uh, hatred for, with GBM and the Global Wrestling Extreme uh, competitors come from? Like, why is it? Why is he the Brigade Butcher? Why is why is that his? GBM wanted to be the Brigade Butcher. GBM hates Bill Venus. I mean, I'm not saying I like Bill Beans either, but I'm kind of curious why that became GBM's job and why no one's backing him up. He wanted an opportunity. You hear that new song for GBM. Very nice. Good, Brother Mike. You can find the Brigade Butcher shirt on phpwshop.com. Buy it now. Absolutely, Do you it. can. Great looking, uh, great looking piece of merchandise. Is there an El Guapo shirt coming up soon? Absolutely not. Because if I have my say in it, El Guapo won't be here after tonight. GBM doesn't seem to be too worried about his opponent here, El Guapo, or uh, all of his uh, all of his pals there at ringside. He's got himself a baseball bat, the great equalizer breaker. Yes, he does. So why why are all these guys getting fired, Big Underscore Man? We saw Pyro get fired previously, and now El Guapo possibly is on the chopping block. He just got here. I don't want them here. I, I, I understand I that. I never but wanted them here, Breaker. What about Pope Riku? I don't Jim want, I don't want them here. And I did say for the time that they're here, they are not allowed to bring their potpourri. Yeah. That's not allowed here. No, it's not. We're not I agree with that. I don't like anything that makes you smell good. No, and they're not they're not gonna be throwing it in people's faces. None of that crap. If they're gonna be here, they, they can't they can't bring that potpourri crap along with them. So first time seeing El Guapo, it's kinda a little bit hard to call this match without any prior history of the guy. Um, obviously he's a little bit big for a luchador. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think he must be an older luchador. Um, so we might see a little bit of the old style of lucha. Nice suplex from GBM, followed by a nice leg drop there. So I, I believe Bill Benis told you, though, if I'm if I'm not incorrect here, that one of us goes oh. away. Wow, nice count from El Guapo. More show up. So are you afraid if El Guapo loses here tonight and he is gone, we're going to see another... Global Wrestling Extreme Reject showing who, up. Who else is there? I mean... Oh, I don't know, man. You know them better than I do. Yeah, I mean, on, honest to God, the only one that he's ever talked about that I haven't even seen yet... Jim McCarl was trying to go after GBM. Man. I saw that. The only one the only one that hasn't shown up yet that Bill's ever even talked about is, is freaking uh, somebody named Reggie. 
who owns Reggie's Sandwich Shop. You know what I mean? Like, I, I oh, remember, GBM's got a big oh, time. Big time Tombstone pile driver from GBM. And then, you know, of course, we got Pandemonium. He hasn't shown up yet. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I don't know. I eventually they're gonna run out of global wrestling extreme guys, though. You say that. I don't know. We got Carl on the, over here on this side. Oh, whoa! There's the corruptor. GBM definitely in firm control here. Got to cover. One, two. Oh, God, I believe that last time uh, when Pyro was in the ring, he actually lost by. Uh, by hitting GBM below what, the belt. What is Carl doing? What's he doing? He just no, knows you're GBM kidding me. What the hell, you dude? You just got El Guapo fired. Why are these guys idiots? What? He's still hitting him. Well, El Guapo's fired. Maybe he was the sacrificial lamb. Could just beat up GBM again. Good job, Carl. Well, the Die Hard Championship will be up next as Dobro. Uh, to defend against Aaron Anders, who demanded House of Positivity Dobro. Yes. And uh, I, I got to be honest with you, man. I, I think House of Positivity Dobro is going to be just as dangerous as the Reaper. You say that, but Aaron Anders is a formidable foe for that title. We'll see what happens. We will. Aaron Anders recently emerging on the scene, uh, kind of a, a little bit of a different look. But as you know, Aaron Anders held that Gatekeeper Championship for a very, very long time. He definitely did. And uh, he is looking for championship gold once again in this company. And he very well could be the first to break out of the Gatekeeper division and earn himself another title. Very possible. Now, we've seen Jason Wolf do it. Yes, we have. But he's also in the tag team division. This would be the first one to go from single to single, which I think would be interesting. It would be. And, you know, again, the Die Hard Championship, a little bit more dangerous division to be in. This, this division will shorten your career. It's not for the faint of heart. It's also not for the guys who have short entrances. Jesus. Come on, Aaron. You're over here hot dogging just like Jack Gamble was early. Well, you really have a problem with hot dogging. I hate hot dogging. What about Coney's? You like Coney's? Coney's are good. Put a little chili cheese onion on there. I'm not a fan of the mustard with the chili, though. I, I like it. That's, that's it's, it's, it's a weird taste there. But I do like I do enjoy Coney. Aaron Anders, he's, he's ready, looking in great shape. But House of Positivity, Dobro, we have not seen him in a while in pay-per-view uh, action, so we're going to be kind of curious to see what happens here tonight. Definitely curious. Here he comes. The diehard champion, House of Positivity, Dobro, always happy, always smiling, always in a good mood. Look at that t-shirt, Breaker. Absolutely. You can find the new uh, Two Sides of the Same Coin t-shirt over at phpwshop.com. You know, he looks focused, though. He does. Me? Dobro looks excited to be here. He's, uh, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's the same Dobro, right? Yeah. As, as the Reaper. like Two Sides of the Same Coin. It's the same guy. I mean, the, the Reaper is, to me, just scare tactics. You know, I mean, we're, we still got the same guy underneath. It's all about getting in the opponent's head. You you peel all that away, you still have the same man. Sure, and I, and I agree with that, but, I mean, this this appears to be a different Dobro. I mean, he's a lot more happy-go-lucky, a lot more uh, positive. The Dobro, I think, mo most people, you know, identify with. The, the Reaper, he's a, he's a different kind of cat, man. Absolutely. Aaron Anders is ready. The diehard champion Dobro, who's been through some pretty hellacious matches over the last few months since he's won that title. Yes. He including a chicken has. coop match. Yeah, first of its kind. We had never seen that match before, and uh, who knows when the next time we'll see it is. Aaron Anders knows exactly what it's all about here.
I'm still reeling over Jack Gamble dropping the gatekeeper championship and just walking away from it. Yeah, I, I uh, that's a hard one to explain. I think it kind of caught both of us by by surprise. We're outside the ring here. Dobro dropping Aaron right on the ring apron there. Man, that, that feel good, I'm sure. But to have such a hard-fought match with your former best friend and tag team partner, and to just drop the title, uh, I'm not sure what what to say about I mean, that. you know him better than I do. Sure. I, I mean, what the hell's going on in his head? Hey, I, that's not the same Jack Gamble I know. That's you, all I'm saying. You need, I don't. To, you need to let him know that was $2,800. How about you let he him needs know? To not, you let him know. He needs to not. Hey, Mr. 49%, take initiative. Hey, Mr. 50%. Do the hard work. Don't just do stuff to screw people over, maybe. Oh. Maybe he's mad at you about a payday. I'm going to screw over everyone. Corruption. Right now, I'm disgusted by Jack Gable. I think there's more to the story, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to find out. Hopefully, in the next coming weeks, we'll, we'll figure something out as to why that happened. We've got a cover from Dobro. Good kick out from Aaron Anders. So all things considered, which Dobro do you like better? I, you know, I think House of Positivity Dobros, you know, kind of got a fun, loving personality. He's got some really fun-looking gear. Oh. Like, I, I like this version too. Although I think most people probably tend to lean toward the side of the Reaper. But this one's more approachable, though. If you uh, sure. if you ever run across Dobro in the back, you better hope and pray that it's the House of Positivity version. Absolutely. Oh, going out in the crowd here, going into no man's land, as it were. We're fighting into the people. Oh, Ooh, nice, nice reverse thrust kick. Shades of Ray Rougeau. Oh, Dobro knocking him back into the ring area. Dobro back into the ringside uh, area. They're by the steps here, a dangerous spot to be in. Oh. Aaron Anders grabbing the steps. That can't be good. All legal in these matches. Dobro fights it off, though. Yes, he does. Dobro's kind of taking control over this match. And just kind of tossing him back and forth. I don't, I don't know what the mentality of this is. One thing we've seen in the past with these matches is they don't usually resemble a match, more of a fight. Yeah, they, they ain't pretty. No, they're not. And Dobro just down and out there. Aaron Andrews is a vicious competitor. He's a fun-loving guy, but you get him in the ring... He's a, he's a different kind of guy. I've seen him, like I've said, I've seen him covered in his own blood. I've seen him beat to oh. absolute hell. I've seen him spend a few nights in the emergency room. So this is kind of right up his alley. Oh, right. Oh. Gut first right on this corner of those steps. Dobro's hurting right now. Now Andrews has got that chair. Yes, he does. Oh, God. Right across the top of the head. That's not going to make you feel good. Just wearing Dobro out with that chair. Oh! Wow, unbelievable. Ooh. Golly. Once again, stomach first. Aaron, Aaron Anders, again, he does not get enough credit for this. He knows how to tear apart somebody. You see, he's, he's focusing that attack right on that gun, too. Unbelievable. Oh, and on the back. back. Got to roll over on us, hit you on the back. And there's your stomach again. Good God. Unbelievable. Dobro's got to be hurting here. I think his ribs might be broken. It's very possible. Now, one thing we haven't talked about, does the referee have the power to stop a match if the, if the brutality gets to be too much here? I mean, yeah, referee's discretion, obviously, but is he going to? I mean, Dobro's getting up. He's trying to move. I mean, referee's right in there. I'm sure Dobro's telling him, do not ring the bell. Oh, right into that chair. Aaron, Aaron wedged that chair between the middle and top rope. Hit send Dobro into it head first. He's going to that kill switch. Absolutely. It could be how we got to cover. 
This can't be it. This can't. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. History's made, Big Underscore Bane. I can't believe it. We have a new Die Hard champion. Aaron Anders is your new Die Hard champion. What did I tell you? I said that I think he might have Dobro's number. That's, I mean, that's, doesn't make it any less of a shock. I mean, and is this why he requested the House of Positivity? It's got to be, but at the same time, I mean, like we've said, two sides of the same coin. They're the same guy. What's the difference? Maybe not quite the same guy like we know. Uh, I, I do know one thing. Uh, we have a new diehard champion, and his name is Aaron Anders. Aaron Anders etching his name into history here. Uh, we the come back. I feel like it's complete now. I the sky's the limit for this guy. I know Aaron he, Anders. He's going to be a proud diehard champion. But he, he told me he's prepared to bleed for this title. And wow. uh, I think after tonight, that's that's proof. And I think even more so, he's willing to make his opponents bleed for that title. Absolutely. Wow, unbelievable. History made new champion here at Faultality. Your new diehard champion, the one and only Aaron Anders. What does this mean for Dobro? All right, Breaker, well, the action don't stop there. We got fully posable. The Black Hand Warriors and doing the favor all vying for that tag team championship as we see the inevitable assassins defend in a square dance ladder match. This is going to be absolutely insane. It's going to be chaos. Um, in every sense of the word, two former tag team champions in this match. In fact, I believe Jeff Toon has just recently returned to action. This will be his first match back. And frankly, if you ask me, he shouldn't even be involved in this match. It should just be a normal two-on-two -two tag team match. Well, that's good that I didn't ask you because I'm glad he's here. I'm hoping for fully posable to shock the world tonight. But we got the Black Hand Warriors about to make their entrance. I believe their first shot at the tag team championship. Big underscore Bane, obviously you've grown close to these guys as they become your personal henchmen in your uh, your uh, quest for full-on corruption of PHPW. No, full-on order in PHPW. And these two, By throwing people off trucks? These two are my right-hand men in getting the job done. And tonight they're going to get the job done against the rest of these six goofballs. We'll see what happens here, but like I said, we got two former tag team champions, but let's not discount the inevitable assassins. That's one thing me and you can both agree on. These guys came together and one of the weirdest circumstances shocked the world and seemingly have been unbeatable as your PHPW tag team champions. They are officially the longest reigning tag team champions in PHPW history. And as much as it pains me to say it, I wouldn't be shocked if they held on to the gold tonight. They are that damn good as a tag team. Look at Eric and Barry. Little vicious and delicious rock in the new shirt, which you can now get over at phpwshop.com. Eric looking jacked as always. Barry, the Husky heartthrob, leader of the Husky Army, looking mean as always. You know, I'm very curious to see a showdown between Dave DeLorean and uh, and Barry Frost here. In fact, these two teams mirror each other a lot more than I think people realize. Yeah, you got um, you got one you know one guy who's more of a body guy, the other guy who's more of just a big bruiser. I I, I I'm with you on that. I think they would uh, and they wear sunglasses indoors. Hey, you got to keep cool. You got to keep cool. You wouldn't know nothing about that, Becker. I wear sunglasses sometimes. Fully posable. What? Well, this is kind of a different look. Rocking uh, different gear. Maybe somebody forgot their gear bag or something. That happens from time to time. We got Jeff rocking. Look at Eric the... Barker. He was here for like six months. Never got gear. Just wore a pair of jeans. Yeah, that's because we didn't pay him. We should have never paid him. Regardless here, Jeff uh, looks looks in fighting shape. Scott looks great. I, I could see these guys uh, once again climb to the top of the mountain and becoming PHPW Tag Team Champions. We could. We could very well see it happen. I mean, that what a return story that'd be for Jeff. Well, and let's, let's not discount the fact that Jeff's probably the biggest high flyer here. So does he have the best advantage in a ladder match? It's. I mean, it's quite possible. But here come the Tag Team Champs, Breaker. Yes, sir. Over 100 days as tag team champions. And Absolutely nothing short of impressive. And uh, we don't have their belts here because they are hanging high above the ring at this moment. Absolutely. Poetic Prophet Jason Wolf, the inevitable assassins. 
uh, won a, uh, a a bit of a makeshift tournament several months ago that led to them winning the tag team championship. And I don't think anyone expected this run. Big underscore band. No, definitely not. And I, for one, have not hated it though. I, I think they have made an incredible tag team. And they both have their roles to play in that tag team, and they both play those roles very, very well. Without a doubt. In fact, Jason Wolf was our inaugural gatekeeper champion, and Poetic Prophet, our, I believe, was the first ever diehard champion. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, when I look at these guys, you know, you, you, you've always liked to compare Barry Frost to a Scott Norton. When I look at these guys, gear aside, they remind me of a modern-day APA. I can definitely agree with that. Just two big, bad bruisers that you do not want to meet in a dark alley. And, and I know Jason Wolf's gotten into a scrap a time or two in his life. I can't imagine uh, Ladder was never involved, so I'm curious to see how he fares in this. Because this is another thing, too, Big Underscore. And it's a completely different psychology. This is a ladder match. We're not going for knockouts. We're not going for pinfalls. You have to climb a ladder and pull title belts down from high above the ring. Yeah, it is no easy task, that is for sure. Everything's kind of going chaotic here. It's hard to call. All guys are going at it here. I guess it's the first team to get an advantage, right? I mean, yeah. And I mean, how do you get an advantage? I mean, when you're when you're thinking of it in your tag team sense, I mean, you are two against six. No doubt about it. We get Jeff here going after Dave DeLorean on the outside. Nice big gut buster. Smart strategy, I think, to uh, try to hurt your opponent outside the ring makes it harder for him to climb in. But you got six other guys in the ring waiting on you. Absolutely. So we got Dave DeLorean and Jeff Toon on the outside. We got Poetic Prophet and Michael, Morris, Michael Magnuson. Yeah, it looks like Scott's following them out there. We got Eric Brown and Jason Wolf still inside the ring. Eric Brown with the uh, nice monkey flip on Jason Wolf with the advantage here. Eric Brown has, we've kind of found out that he's kind of got an old school way of doing things in the ring. And I don't hate it. No, definitely not. And I think doing the favor, you know, much, much like. Um, much like our tag team champions, I could see both of these guys down the road having some single success. Absolutely, yeah. Eric Brown thrown out of the ring very unceremoniously by Jason Wolf. Michael Magnuson rolling out to him. This is also a case in point where it's 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 a little bit confusing. You're just hitting anyone that comes near you, right? Nice yeah. take down on uh, Jason Wolf there from Scott Toon. Of course, we know these two guys are great friends, but there's no there's no friends here tonight. Definitely not. I mean, we've, we've seen that already with uh, Jack Gamble and John Webb, right? I mean, two former friends, two former tag team champions. Yeah, I mean, they, they were former tag team champions. Now they're bitter enemies. I mean, it, it could easily happen in a situation, especially like this, when it's so chaotic. Yeah, definitely. We've got Dave DeLorean and it looks like Jeff Toon there in the middle of the ring. Now, ladder's now being introduced by Michael Magnuson. This could be a smart move. Both Black Hand Warriors are in the ring. And they're setting up a ladder. Of course, Jeff is still upright. Probably not the best strategy. Eric Brown seeing the ladder coming in, into the fold there. Smart strategy cutting off Michael Magnuson. Right here, I don't know if it's the best time to climb the ladder. Well, I think Eric Brown was thinking about it. He wasn't he, sure he what was. he wanted to do. Um, I go back to advice Kurt Angle once seeked from Edge and Christian about ladder matches. They said, well, don't fall off because that sucks. Well, we got possibly going, going for, for it. it. Come on, Michael. I, I, don't, I don't. I think Scott Toon just realized it. And oh. No, Jay, that's Jason Wolf. Excuse me. Now, Michael Magnuson. Whoa, he was caught. Oh, man. Big electric chair drop from the assassin Jason Wolf. Wow. What a profit's on the top rope. I don't know what he's thinking about here. Another big I've, high flyer. Very comfortable in the top rope. Nice splash on the Barry Frost. Nice suplex from Jeff Toon onto Eric Brown there, right in the middle. And now Poetic Prophet's got control of the ladder. Ooh, just smashing Barry Frost with it. This is one of those cases where just putting the ladder on your head and doing a helicopter spin is probably not the worst strategy. Yeah, I mean. trying to hope your partner gets out of the way. Yes. Get everybody else that moves. Nice side salto suplex from Dave DeLorean. And, uh... Got one of his own from their Poetic Prophet. 
He's going back up to the top rope. I'm, again, I'm not sure that's the best strategy, but... We got all eight guys in the ring right now. He's wow. on the top rope. Good Lord. Phoenix splash on the Dave DeLorean from Poetic Prophet. Unbelievable. Dave DeLorean got the knees up. There's so much chaos, it's hard to even call everything. I know it. Barry Frost going after Dave DeLorean, which I said that'd be a great matchup at some point. A hoss fight, if you will. Yes. We still got another ladder set up outside the ring that I haven't even grabbed yet. Well, maybe they're just waiting until they break this one over somebody's head. I mean, they've been using it so much. That's another thing. I hope we got plenty of ladders back there. I could see both of these getting broken. I, I, I made sure Bill went to the Home Depot and got a, got a handful of them. Barry Frost is going up the ladder. Absolutely, he is. It's a long way down, Barry. You better make sure you come down with the title. I think Scott Toon sees it. He's oh, pushing no. on the ladder. Oh, no, Barry. Come on, man. No, Not no. a good spot to be oh. in. Oh, powerbomb from Dave DeLorean. Unbelievable. But the Prophet's got that ladder once again. Just, oh, knocking Jeff Toon out with it. Absolutely, he did. Poetic Prophet's another big high flyer, and you know, um... Oh, he's going up. He is. He's going for the titles. I think Barry Frost sees it. Hitting him from behind, trying to knock him off there. Well, Jeff is going to meet him up there. Oh, Poetic Prophet goes down the hard way. Jeff Toon going for the titles. They're pushing on the ladder. I'm, so I'm sorry, was that Scott helping? Wait, wait a minute. Do you think he got confused there? He had to have. It's possibly because they're wearing different colored pants. There might be some friction and fully posable here, beginning to them. Scott Toon and Jason Wolf have very similarly colored pants. Sometimes it's hard to tell them apart from our vantage point here. But yeah, it looked like that was Scott pushed over Jeff. I don't even know if Jeff's aware of that, though, Big Bean. I don't think he is. I mean, it, if I hadn't done a double take, I would have missed it myself. Jeff Toon working over a poetic profit here. Dave DeLorean's still kind of down and out inside the ring. Everybody fighting outside on the floor. It's absolute chaos right now. There goes Jeff. We got Dave DeLorean put a profit in the ring. Oh, I think it, that ladder smacked Dave right in the face. What a profit has been kind of mainstay in the ring. He hasn't gone outside too much. It's kind of a keeping guard almost of the tag team titles. You really need to be almost left alone and, and try to slide under the radar as much as you can. Oh, Jason oh. Wolf was trying that. That did not quite work out for him in that exchange. He went down the hard way. On yes, that he absolutely did. This type of match with the with the heights of the fall, I mean, you got to know it's a huge injury risk. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it's, it's always going to start to slow down the wrestlers if you fall off or get hit with the ladder a few times, right? And we're starting to see it now. Absolutely. And Barry Frost is down and out on the floor. Jason Wolf's out. A lot of guys are kind of laying down. Michael Magnuson's down. Um, looks like Eric Brown's down. Poetic Prophet's getting back up. Scott Toons. I mean, but everyone, they, 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 then you know, they, someone goes down. It's it's crazy. Right? I mean, we're, we're in rough shape. I mean, these guys have already just, as long as this match has been going on, they've been through it. This is a type of match, Big Underscore Bane. I don't know if you win as a, as opposed to just you survive. I think you're right. I think survival is key in this match. Who's going to be the last two men standing? Scott Toon taking a chance to just pose to the people. Sometimes you don't think correctly in these matches, Big Underscore Bane. Yeah, sometimes you just want to send the crowd home happy. And that's... See, he's doing it again. He's just yeah. He's hey, enjoy he's, yourself, he's, pal. He's loving the crowd. I mean, Barry Frost is taking him, taking point of profit to task. I mean, why not? Barry Frost with the ladder set up. Are we going to see first ever two time tag team champions? He's got the title. Doing There's the no favor. one else in it. there. Looks like Michael Magnuson sees what's happening. He's climbing up. Wow, you talk about just in the nick of time. Yeah, now Jason Wolf's kind of helping Michael Magnuson out. Oh, Barry Frost is saying st Oh, he was. Yeah. He just got knocked off by Magnuson, who's now going for the titles. And Maybe not the best strategy. Jason Wolf is right there to stop it. Well, I say that, but he hasn't stopped it yet. There's Poetic Prophet. 
Now he stopped it. Ooh, Michael Magnuson goes down oh, far. Eric Frost. Oh, Eric Brown, excuse me. Nice suplex from Eric Brown on Poet of Profit. Jeff Toon back out of the ring. What the hell is Dave DeLorean doing? A big wow. ass moonsault. Big moonsault from the big man Dave DeLorean. Scott Toon sneaking in. Look at the strength on Scott Toon. Unbelievable. Good God. Press slam. Followed up with a beautiful wow. moonsault. Scott Toon, I think he's, I was about to say he needs to climb the ladder, and there he, there he did it. He's reading my mind. Once again, first ever two-time tag team champions. They got the chance right Doing now. Doing the favor, coming in. Oh, and he, ooh, that's not a good spot to be left in. That ladder out from underneath you. Scott's kicking his feet, trying to figure out what to do what next here. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Eric Brown. He just speared him right out of the midair. Jumped off the top rope. Through. Scott Toon in the middle of the ring to give him a spear. I, I say this a lot, Big Underscore Band, that I something I've never seen in PHPW. That's a first that here tonight. Absolutely is a first. We said before this started, it's gonna be absolute chaos. It's been nothing short of that. And these guys are still going at it. Somehow they're still mustering up the strength to keep fighting. And it's all about that PHPW tag team championship that hangs high above the ring. Absolutely. Uh, all these bodies flying around, it'll be so easy to accidentally land on someone, get an ankle torn up, or dislocate your kneecap. Yeah, it's so much danger in this match. Big time. Very dangerous match. Now fishing with suplex from Eric Brown. That's his signature maneuver. Oh, my God! Oh, I think Jeff caught Poetic Prophet come off the top there. Trouble in the toy aisle. The crowd loves this. And this of course, is awesome. It's an amazing, amazing match. Who are we going to see climb that ladder and get those tag team titles? You know, the, the thing about this match is it's really anybody's game up until that end because at any point, it's a little bit of luck thrown into, uh, you know, being able to just survive all the beatings. But Prophet's the only guy left in the ring, but he doesn't have a ladder available. Well, he's barely in the ring. He's out there on the apron. Scott Toon throwing a ladder back in. He's all by himself. Could be a good time. Looks like he's climbing the ladder, up. kid. Make oh. yourself famous. So here comes Jason Wolf. Stopping him. Going after Scott. I don't know if that's the best strategy. Well, I think he rethought it and slid back in the ring here. Now we got Eric Brown in the ring. He's going after Jason Wolf. Hitting him from behind. Jason's still got a hold of those tag titles, though. Jason's not letting go. Eric Brown's not sure what to do here. Oh, uh, I thought he had him for a second. Man. I did too. Barry Frost coming in with the save, just knocking that ladder over. You can see these guys are moving a little bit slower. They're beat up. They're hurting. They're bloody. Unbelievable. Wow. Ooh, I think Jeff just nailed Eric Brown right in the face of that ladder. Oh, man. And again. I think Eric's busted open, Breaker. It was bound to happen at this point, right? Yeah. Jeff not relenting, picking up Eric Brown. Oh, I, thought, I think he was going to try to knock him outside the ring there. It didn't quite work out. Eric Brown back in control. But a profit's back in the ring. He might have found an opportunity. I think Eric Brown sees him, though. He's climbing back down. Oh. oh! Now that was a big mistake on Eric Brown's part. Bonnie Profits left by himself. He said that's what you get. Jeff Toon's coming after him. Oh no. Here comes Scott. Everyone's back in there and they realize it's happening. I think Oh my god. Someone just closed the ladder on him. I think that was Dave DeLorean. Dave maybe. DeLorean, yeah. Oh, Dave DeLorean's busted wide open too. A lot of blood in this match. We're gonna have a probably a very big injury report after this. I, I say that's very likely. Might not have a tag team division after this match. Not a very stable one, that's for sure. 
Wait, right, Cody Crawford and Jason Wolf, they're the only two in the ring. Yeah, they are. Everyone else is down and out. Jeff Toon and Dave DeLorean are fighting outside, but I don't, I don't know. think they realize that they're going. I don't they're think they do either. The ladder. They're both there. Jason Wolf kind of protecting him. This could be all. Jeff Toon's back in. He sees what's going on. He's hitting Cody Crawford. Here comes Michael Magnuson. He yanks Jason Wolf down, but Cody Crawford's still up there. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh wow. That was close. Breaker. Unbelievable beginning for them. Jeff Toon has that ladder once again, just nailing everybody in sight. Scott Toon taking down Porter Crawford there. Dave DeLorean's got the ladder now. You know, one, one point or another in this match, we're going to be all the teams have almost won. It's been close on several occasions, and, and frankly, it's anybody's ball game. I mean, that's the fun thing about these ladder matches, is it's almost kind of a luck thing. I mean, if you can catch it when nobody's around, that's the hardest part. I don't know if Puddle Profit caught all of that Phoenix splash that I made the way, and they made that away. Which again, that's high risk maneuver in this type of match is maybe not the smartest strategy. And Scott Toon just set up the ladder, but he's not climbing it yet, which again, not a good idea with three other guys in the ring. But then again, he wanted to make sure Dave DeLorean was down and out. Now he's wanting to figure out what to do with Point of Profit. Big right hand, that, that might help. Oh. Point of Profit's going to return the favor. Oh, and now Scott Toon's out of here. Point of Profit's back alone again. This is familiar. There's Jeff Toon, who's the first guy in the ring last time. Can he do something about it? There's you Jeff Toon. better grab him, Jeff. There's Michael Magnuson. Not, not, he tried to push it off. No, it put a profit, did it? Unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Wow, what a... Still. Unbelievable. Still. Your Brilliant. tag team champions, Brick. The inevitable assassins, they earned that one, Bigger Scorpion. Absolutely, they did. Yeah, Eric Brown's getting dropped right on the concrete there. Unbelievable. There's a lot. Hell, I feel like we're watching this match for the first time. These replays, I didn't even get to see them. So much was going on. Fishing the suplex on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly executed by Eric Brown. Wow. What a match, but still, I mean, you can't take anything away from the Inevitable Assassins. They earned that one. Absolutely, they did. And They're still your tag team champions. Still your tag team champions, no doubt about it. I mean, what is left for the Inevitable Assassins to do? What do we do for the Inevitable Assassins? What kind of competition is left for these two men, Breaker? They have beaten everybody, some now, twice. Unbelievable. What a match. What a match. Breaker, we got to keep it moving. Well, we need to take a break here almost, Big Underscore Bane. This is an unbelievable match, but we can't. We still have the Fallatality Tournament. Absolutely. The Fallatality Tournament Finals. Jordan Zeilinger versus Soda Hunter in the Fallatality Rules match. That means the only way to win is by knockout. And if they can't answer the referee's 10 count, the match is over. And as you can see, both guys won two matches to get here. Uh, Soda Hunter, former Gatekeeper Champion. Jordan Zeilinger, former PHPW Champion. These guys are looking to climb back to that metaphorical top of the mountain, as it were. And I think this is the way to do that. Both guys need this win, Big Underscore. Absolutely, they do. Here's Jordan Zeilinger, the host of Write My Podcast. Um, first ever PHPW Champion, right? Absolutely, yeah. He kind of came out of nowhere. Was I feel like was the underdog in that story. Came out on top. And, you know, we've seen this played out before, Big Underscore. And if you remember, at Ghost Goblins and Grapple Holds, our very first pay-per-view almost one year ago to the day, our main event was a tournament final. And do you know who Jordan Zeilinger beat in that tournament final? I remember very well. It was the Soda Hunter Breaker. Do we see history repeat itself? 
I, I don't know. I mean, this is a different Jordan Zeilinger, and this is a different Soda Hunter. And without a doubt, it is, but that's got to be weighing in on Soda Hunter. He remembers. Oh, absolutely. And I think he wants that retribution. I think he wants that win back. Has there been anyone that's been to the top of the mountain but hasn't quite been able to reach that more than Soda Hunter? Not in this company. I mean, Soda Hunter, this isn't... I mean, because whoever wins this gets a shot at the PHPW Championship. But this wouldn't be Soda Hunter's first opportunity at the title. That's what I'm saying. He's gotten that opportunity before, but he's never been able to cross that line, so to speak. But it's just a matter of time. He, he, you say that, though. You, you say that, but it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. But. So maybe it's not a matter of time. Maybe this is as high as Soda Hunter goes. Maybe, but he is a former gatekeeper champion. He knows what it takes to win. He, he's, I'm not saying that he doesn't. I think Soda Hunter has a hugely bright future here, but maybe Jordan Zeilinger has his number. And that's quite possible. Wow, oh, wow my way God. To start. Jordan Zeilinger is one of the most, in my opinion, unpredictable performers here in PHPW because you never know what to expect from this guy. Boy, ain't that the truth, and I never expected that right out of the gate. That is a side suplex. Jordan Zeilinger, uh, you know, looks to be in top, top shape. Soda Hunter is always fueled by Surge, so he's always ready to roll here. And I do want to bring this up. Uh, during the semifinals, Soda Hunter did get a little bit banged up. I mean, that was a brutal match. Everybody's been through brutal matches in this tournament, but Soda Hunter wanted to keep going on. Well, now that you mentioned that, I, I do I do have the injury report here on Soda Hunter, and he was a little banged up. Do you think maybe this is a wise decision? I, I, I can't speak for Soda Hunter. If it were me, I feel like I would also want to take this match, knowing that I have a shot at the title again. Yeah, maybe so. But is, is the title more important than your health, Big Orange Football? I mean, the... When you, when you think of it, the title equals cash. And, I mean, what's more important than cash? Your health. You say that until you have your health with no electricity. Yeah, but you can't, um, you can't spend your money if you are uh, hurting. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. I hope it pays off for Soda Hunter. Um, Jordan Zeilinger, though, is not... In my opinion, he's, he's kind of the dark horse here. But we've seen him in this situation before. Yeah. And Jordan Zeilinger was the first in this tournament to bring out the weapons. The very first match we saw in this in this tournament, uh, no one brought out weapons. And it's, I mean, it, this it's, is a, a no it's a knockout only tournament, though. Yeah, but it's a no disqualification knockout tournament. I mean, use whatever the hell you want. And Jordan Zeilinger was the first to really utilize that. And he's Taking full advantage of it again here tonight. Good God. Brain buster on the floor there. Um, obviously, Soda Hunter needs to maybe change his strategy up here. It's been all Jordan Zeilinger, I feel like, for the last several minutes. We got a count here. It could be it. Well, I know Soda Hunter. I mean, he might be banged up, but he ain't going to give up that easily. If, if he can hear the 10 count, you bet your ass he's going to be getting up. There's no quit in Soda Hunter. I'm not saying that at all, but coming in. What is Jordan Zeilinger doing? He's got the steps, and I don't think he plans to do any aerobics. Eight. It's like he knows he's going to get up. Yep. He's just waiting on him. Oh, my God. And uh, good morning to you. I'm going to hit you right in the face with some steps. See, right here, this is great strategy for Jordan. He's able to catch his breath and uh, prepare for what Soda Hunter's going to do when he gets up. And This has been all Jordan's island now. Absolutely it has. I mean, I, this could be it. Okay, he's getting up. Soda Hunter is not moving very well here. My he's gosh. just right back down. We've Jordan seen this right in the past. back on him. It's two, but I think he's probably going to go for the hat trick. Oh, oh man. Face first DDT. Oh, he's not even letting the rest count yeah, here. Yeah, he's not even letting them count. He, just, he may have just tripped over those steps, but I'm not sure. Hard to tell from our vantage point. Big knee right to the bridge of the nose. Obviously, no count outs in this type of match. Side salto suplex on the steel ramp. Two, 
I mean, what a soda hunter got to do to get back in this match because Jordan's Island was not even really letting him breathe. The first thing he needs to do is get back onto his feet. He needs to get a weapon, I think. He needs to try to create some space here. I mean, no disqualification. Use those low blows. I mean, do whatever you got to do. Fight dirty, soda hunter. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know if he can hear you, but that would be good advice. But you know what? Soda Hunter's a fighter, and he's throwing them right hands. Or he was. But again, Soda's hurting. He's probably not coming in 100%. And wow, nice count ah. from Jordan Zylian. Once again, Soda's down. I mean, stop the damn match already. I think Jordan's not even. I mean, this is starting to feel personal to me, Breaker. We can't. Can we count out Soda Hunter? I mean, what a big short arm clothesline there. Wrenching down on Jordan Zeilinger like he's a freaking can of Coke. Soda just stomped away. Soda's kind of taking control here. Let's see if he can make it count. Well, he's kind of, see, Soda's kind of attacking body parts here. Not a bad strategy. Kind of looked like a low blow. It might not have been. But I think he, he knocked him into that guardrail, possibly. Again, the lights are very bright right now. It's kind of hard to see everything that's happening. We're going to call the best we can for everybody. Soda Hunter, I feel like, is attacking every part of Jordan's Islander's body. He's definitely trying to. That might have been a little bit low, too. It, it Jordan, a little Jordan's low. down. Soda's not even giving him a, a, a chance to count. He's just pounding away. I think they can hear me. So he's kind of moving around, trying to catch his, catch his bearings. Not a bad strategy here. He's hurting. This could be it, Breaker. Referee's up to a six count. It could be. Jordan has not moved. Oh, he's starting to stir a little bit. Back up to his feet. Both guys are hurting here. Oh. Quick take down from Jordan Island, who might be a tad more resilient than Soda Hunter. Wow. Ah, that, another brain buster. So we have those thin mats outside the floor. That's concrete underneath the game's coming. Absolutely it is. Wow, Regal Suplex from Jordan Zeiling. Unbelievable. Soda's not moving. I mean, this is not not good look for Soda Hunter right here. He's hurting. I, mean, I think he might be knocked out, Baker. He might be. He's not moving now. That's it. That is it, Breaker. Hey, Jordan Zeilinger earned that victory. I do feel sorry for Soda, and I, and I hope he's able to bounce back in some way. I mean, that, this I mean, was a uh, tough valley, tournament. A valiant effort, right? But, I mean, yeah, he put up one hell of a fight. This was just a hell of a tournament, man. I mean, it, it was. It was a brutal tournament. It was a difficult tournament. And kind of like what we saw with the ladder match a bit earlier tonight, it was survival. That regal suplex right in the back of his head on the concrete there. That was, that was a... Yeah, that was tough, man. I mean, we able to see that final 10 count. And that's. I, th I think we need to send the doctor out to so make sure so is okay. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that. That's there, Jordan's Islander with the win. Congratulations, Jordan. But we're gonna need. I think the refs out there checking on him. Yeah, so does not moving. He needs some medical attention. I mean, obviously, congratulations to Jordan's Islander. But some of, some of these matches being are kind of kind of getting harder to watch. Yeah, it's a little tough, man. We're going to need to get some help down here. I mean, we can't just. But I, I guess next month, Ghost Goblins and Grapple holds up. It's one year from the time Jordan Zeilinger won that championship, right? Yeah. So he's in line Yeah. Uh, for a main event match against, I guess, the winner of this upcoming match for the PHPW Heavyweight Championship, Mike the Cleaner, our new champion. Defends against former champion, Ten Kinds of Handsome, Elvis Aliaga. And I'll be quite honest with you. I'm going to go ahead and call it right now because next month we're going to see Jordan Zeilinger versus Ten Kinds of Handsome, Elvis Aliaga, because the Handsome Championship is coming back to the Handsome Champion. Well, I tend to disagree, 
But I'm not discounting Elvis Aliaga. He's an amazing competitor. He was a great PHPW champion. Um, although I wasn't really too thrilled with how he won the title, he, he did hold it very, very well. He did. What do you mean, how he won the title? He won it respect, respectably. I mean, he, he was in after an eight man. Over, after you screwed over tier one. Yep, that ain't his fault. Is that's that your, that's his your fault. fault? That's your fault. He won it I'm, by I'm fighting. I'm personally blaming you, just in case we're, everyone's clear. I think you're corrupt. Elvis Aliaga won it by fighting valiantly. In okay. a match that wasn't even supposed to happen in the first place. But it did happen. What was the schedule of the main event that night? Does it matter? It does matter. As to matter who? Of, to me. And to everyone watching. It doesn't at matter. Home. Well, here's the thing, Breaker. Damn. Now we have Mike the Cleaner in action, okay? Yeah. So just, the PHPW just leave World it alone. Champion. Just leave it alone. The one thing that you, I believe you hired two guys, maybe but spend your had... budget a little bit too, too hard. To take him out, to throw him off a truck. But that had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with tier one. Okay. Like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the ever loving crap out of you, but don't take it personally. Right. I don't like this guy over here. Right. Exactly. Uh, Thank you for understanding. That's a great answer. I mean, God, it took you on the Oh, Saliaga, 10 kinds of handsome. You, you know, I, I do know that at some point I think uh, tier one's gonna get his hands on you. And I can't wait. He's going to have to make it through the rest of that Fatality Tower first. And I don't think he's got what it takes anymore. Uh, we'll see. Elvis uh, in the ring waiting for his opponent. The one and only Mike the Cleaner. There he is. He's the PHPW Heavyweight Champion. And he takes no L's. He is Mike the Cleaner. Head of security. I just feel disrespected with him wearing the title, that's all. Why? Because he doesn't deserve it. No, he does deserve it. He won it for the square. That's Elvis Aliaga's title. Again, the guy that wasn't even in the scheduled match when he won it. But he won it. And guess what happened last month? The underscore game, Mike the Cleaner, won it. But he wasn't fit. To have that title. But how did he win it? That's Elvis Aliaga's title. You're not even making arguments. You're just throwing random accusations out there. It's unbelievable. I'm throwing the truth out there. Michael. You are not throwing the truth out there. Mike the Cleaner earned the PHPW championship. I had that specific championship made specifically for 10 kinds of handsome Elvis Aliaga. Then how and come your the, man couldn't get the job and now done? now to see this man. guy how wearing How come he it? couldn't get the job done? It's disrespectful. I find you very disrespectful. I'm very respectful. Heck of an argument there. The crowd's almost in a hush here for the main event. It's big fight feels for the PHPW Championship. Mike the Cleaner's first title defense too, big underscore game. Yeah. How many title defenses did Elvis Aliaga have? One? Is yeah, right? one successful. One successful one. That's more than what Mike the Cleaner's had. Handing the belt over to the referee. It's going to be the last time you ever see that title, Mike the Cleaner. Oh, Saliaga, he's very familiar. He's, his bag's a little bit lighter these days, you know. And it's about to get heavier. Make some room. Take some of that hair product out, pal, because you got to fit that belt in again. Here we go. Come Bell on. Sounds we are underway. See what I mean? Just, just disrespectful. What a, I mean... Mike the Cleaner is a, an incredibly difficult wrestler to prepare for because he's not like anybody else. You go for a collar and elbow tie-up, he's just going to throw you across the ring. Yeah, I mean, that's... See, there we go. Elvis Aliaga, he, he kind of learning the game here. Yeah, he's a crafty competitor. I've been in the ring with Elvis many a times. Um, and honestly, a guy that should have been PHPW champion, I just was not a fan of how he won it. It's not a knock on him. It's a knock on your, uh, your corruption. Big knee lift from Mike the Cleaner. I'm sorry, I might be missing a few teeth there. Let's hope not. Might have to get him to the dentist pretty quick. He's our moneymaker, Breaker. Nice drop down from Elvis. Oh, goes for a drop kick, drop kick evaded by Mike the Cleaner. 
the hell we got just holding him? Good lord. Almost a modified boss man slam there from the cleaner. But Elvis Aliaga is a hard, hard competitor to keep down. The second you gain an advantage, he's almost finding a counter out of it. Here he's getting just throwing him. Oh, wow. That's the way you should head. About the only time he does. Big running knee from Elvis. Sure, he wasn't using his head when he joined up with the Venus Brigade. I know that. Nice leg drop from Elvis Aliaga. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Oh yeah! Just a big elbow drop from Elvis Aliaga onto the back. That could be a, a shift change here. Go back up top. Finish, finish the job, Elvis. Come on. Trying to go have another taco backstage from Umberto. Been one. I think he needs to try to stay unbiased during this match. Call it down the middle if you don't mind. I'm too hungry for that. Like the cleaner up on the shoulders, getting some elbows in on Elvis. What do we got going here? Again, kind of that modified boss man slam. Good move from Mike the cleaner going back to the what works. Stomping away on Elvis. Ooh. Modified suplex there from Mike the Cleaner. Now just stomping away, kicking him in the back. Oh no, he's looking like to fold his ass up. He's folding him up. Don't there you tap! Don't you tap, Elvis! Titles on the line! No! Referee that No! Unbelievable big in the show game. No! To say Mike the Cleaner wasn't playing is a gross understatement because ladies and gentlemen. He is still your PHBW champion. No! And his name is Mike the Cleaner. What a match. I am highly offended. What a main event for here for Fatality. I guess this sets up our big main event coming up for Ghost Goblins and Grapple Holds. I am living. Mike the Cleaner and Jordan Zyling are big underscore game. That's got to excite you. This is the what you have failed me, Ellis Aliaga. You have failed me.